Running a country isn't for the faint-hearted. It takes grit to get things done at home and abroad. The job calls for someone with a range of specific qualities. Skills that have long intrigued historian Douglas Brinkley and journalist Jia Lin Yang. I'm David Rubenstein. All my life, I've been passionate about American history. I think that by learning from the past, we can better shape the future. I've spent years interviewing experts to learn more about the U.S. presidency and American power. In this series, I revisit these interviews and bring their stories to light. Douglas Brinkley is an award-winning author, historian, and political commentator. In a recent interview, I asked him, what qualities do great presidents share? I think the main thing about presidential leadership is honesty, character matters, but you also have to be brave and show moments of courage. You don't know what sort of crisis you'll have to put out. Big events happen on your watch, and you'll be judged in history by how you handled it. And also, don't think that leadership's about just yourself. It's about building a team, and you need to have 10, 20, 30 advisors that you can trust if you really want to move our democracy forward and get big things done as president. So as you look at the people who have served as president of the United States, how do you rank them in terms of their leadership qualities? Abraham Lincoln is always the number one president. No matter how bad other presidents have it, Lincoln had it worse. He had to come to Washington, D.C. with assassins lurking. And suddenly after his inauguration, half of the country takes down American flags and puts up Confederate flags. And Lincoln stuck with it and Lincoln is remarkable for liberating slaves. George Washington was a great leader by simply not staying in power. Everybody wanted Washington to do a third term and a fourth term, and he said, no way. In order to have a democracy, I have to step down. Somebody has to take over. Leaders don't cling to power. They serve the country and then step aside. Theodore Roosevelt saved 234 million acres of wild America for national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Harry Truman created our whole national security state. White Eisenhower, our interstate highway system. Ronald Reagan's remembered as a great leader for his incredible diplomacy with Mikhail Gorbachev, the leader of the Soviet Union, and finding a way to reduce nuclear weapons in the world. One of our presidents had a very obvious physical disability. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt had polio. How did that affect his ability to exert leadership? Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1921 suddenly woke up with no feeling in the lower half of his body. He went into a state of disrepair, but he started thinking positively. He started working out with his upper body, even though he couldn't walk. So by the time he became president in March of 1933, when he gave that famous inaugural address where he says, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, it's coming from somebody who couldn't walk. And he was able to convince people to believe in American democracy in the 1930s and early 40s. And the fact that that same Franklin Roosevelt led us to victory against Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan uh, just tells you what a monumental leader he was. FDR defended freedom and the American dream by bringing people and political parties together. Decades later, JFK would follow suit. The president always has to realize that they're talking to all the American people. They're representing everybody. And that president just can't serve his base or her base in the future. Instead, they have to find ways to unite us. John F. Kennedy did this in quite an inspirational way when he decided that we we're going to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. And he pulled Democrats and Republicans and independents all together on a big adventure that we are going to put Americans on the moon. When Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin got off of the Lunar Module Eagle on their Apollo 11 mission, and you have that moment of that's one giant step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
there was Kennedy's vision at play. He found a thread about going to the moon that was able to bring everybody to the table. In 1963, the assassination of John F. Kennedy parachuted his VP, Lyndon B. Johnson, into the hot seat. LBJ also had a knack for bringing the country's political forces together for a common cause. This time, it was to advance civil rights legislation. Martin Luther King had given his famous I Have a Dream speech, and we had to endure the death of Medgar Evers. And Lyndon Johnson knew to get really great civil rights legislation done, he would have to reach across the aisle. And he worked with Republican Everett Dirksen of Illinois, and together they were able to get these historic civil rights bills accomplished. A president will be remembered for their commitment to issues they hold dear. LBJ extended civil rights ideals to immigration reform. Since the 1920s, the U.S. had been following a strict quota-based immigration system based on national origin. Journalist Jia Lin Yang told me how LBJ was determined that the time had come for change. There's a sense that these quotas are pretty indefensible at this point, right? They're based on race science discredited by Nazi Germany, and there's sort of a general agreement that they should go. Well, why was Johnson concerned about this particular area? Why did he care about immigration? I think because he sees it as of a piece of the civil rights fight, right? Like the fight against Jim Crow, this too is about discriminatory laws that are all about treating people of one race differently just simply because of their race. And he gets really behind it. He famously is a total genius at working the levers of Congress. And once he injects that interest and attention, the legislation really does have a chance to pass. There are times of change and progression, but there are also times of crisis. And the country looks to the president for reassurance. Their job is to communicate a message of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. We want our presidents to be the voice of our empathy and to show that there's a human dimension to them. It wasn't easy for Ronald Reagan to come on television when the challenger blew up, yet he found the words to bring honor to those who had died in space. When 9-11 happened and George W. Bush went down to the rubble in Wall Street where the World Trade Center once stood and he had his arm wrapped around a fireman showing that he was with one with the uh, first responders in 9-11. Barack Obama always did an incredible job after a school shooting or death that uh, happened due to gun violence. He would go to those particular places in America and give a speech that just lives forever. Perhaps most famously, when after a shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, Obama went there and sang with the congregation in a church, Amazing Grace. No one ever said running the country was going to be easy, but our most effective leaders have succeeded by exhibiting empathy and commitment and communicating a strong message that instills confidence. What qualities do you look for in a good leader?